Hello and welcome to another Tree Spotters tutorial. In our last video, we talked about how to sign up for Nature's Notebook. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to enter data into Nature's Notebook. So for this tutorial, you're going to need a data sheet with data that you've collected from the Arboretum. So first, I'm going to log into Nature's Notebook. And my browser has already saved my login info from when I created my account. So I'll click Login. Remember that I want to navigate to my observation deck, which is where I'm going to be entering all of my observations. So first, let's just talk about what we'll find on our observation deck. So my active site here is going to be the Arnold Arboretum Tree Spotters program, which is the partner group that I selected when I created my account. So for my active site, I'll see all of my roots here. And these are all preloaded with all of the trees that we're going to be observing for the tree spotters program. So if you click on each of these roots, you'll find the trees that you'll find along those roots. And remember that trees are listed with their accession number, which is a unique identifier that's given to all of the plants in the collections at the Arboretum. So some other information that I'll find here on my observation deck. For each of my species, I can view a species profile, which will give me some information on that species. I can also print a data sheet here, uh, the paper data sheet that I can use out in the Arboretum when I'm collecting my data. Uh, this link will only allow you to print a single day's data sheet. Remember that you can also find single and multiple days data sheets on the Tree Spotters website. I can also click here on the phenophase definition sheet to check out the phenophase definition for that species. So on these sheets, I'll find all the phenophase definitions that are laid out by the National Phenology Network. So if you're ever curious about the exact phenophase definitions for our phenophases that we're observing, you'll find them on these PDFs. And these are the sheets that we draw all of our information from when we're creating our tree spotters resources. So let's pretend I spent the day at the Arboretum observing the beech trees on the beech root, and I just got home and I want to enter my data. So first I have to navigate to the beech root and click on it, and I'll see all five of my beech trees here. Next I want to click on Enter Observation Data, and this will take me to my data entry page. So this is what the data entry page looks like. So you're going to see three columns here, and these three columns will allow you to enter multiple days worth of data uh, all at once. So if I spent last weekend and the weekend before collecting data and I wanted to enter data for three days, I could do that here using these three columns. But today we're just going to pretend I spent one day collecting data and I'm just going to use this first column to enter that data. So I select the date. And next we're going to walk through each of these fields here. So you can click the arrow to expand the field. So we ask that our volunteers enter their time spent observing and their time spent in travel, and this just helps us keep track of how much time our volunteers are spending. So let's say I spent uh, 60 minutes observing the beaches and I spent 90 minutes getting to and from the Arboretum. You can skip the next section since we're not interested in animals. A report on snow is optional, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes, there was 10% coverage and no snow in the treetops. So the next section is where I enter my phenophase observations for each of my trees. And you'll see all five trees on the beach root all listed here. So let's review quickly. Uh, for each of my phenophase observations, I can select yes, no, or question mark. So remember, a yes is yes, I'm confident that I saw that phenophase. No is I'm confident that I did not see that phenophase. And a question mark means I'm unsure about what I actually saw. Remember that if you forgot to make an observation of a phenophase, you will just leave that field blank. You don't have to select anything. The value category here is optional, and we don't ask our tree spotters to record values because it's incredibly hard to do that. So you can leave that blank. <clears throat> so let's pretend that we made our observations of our beaches, and let's walk through each of these phenophases. So since the trees are dormant right now, there isn't much phenophase activity. So we're probably not, we probably didn't make many observations of active phenophases out in the field. So did I see any breaking leaf buds? Nope. Did I see any uh, green leaves? No, I didn't. 
Did I see increasing leaf size? No. Did I see colored leaves? Nope. Did I see falling leaves? Nope. Uh, so sometimes beeches and other trees will retain dead leaves on the tree over winter. That's called marcescence. And since those um, leaves are usually brownish and dead, we're not going to record those as a phenophase. Remember, we're not concerned with dead leaves. We're only concerned with live or color colored leaves in the fall. So did I see flowers or flower buds? No, I didn't. Did I see open flowers? No. Did I see fruits? Well, let's pretend I saw some spent fruits on the tree, but I was unsure whether or not I want to uh, record that as a yes. So I'll put a question mark here, and maybe I'll email my question to a tree spotter's coordinator or post it on Facebook, uh, or ask at the next tree spotter's event whether or not that would count as fruit. And I'll say the same thing for the next uh, category. Did I see ripe fruit? I'm unsure about what I actually saw. And then we'll say no for recent uh, fruit or seed drop. In the comments section is an area where you can add additional comments about the trees. So if you saw something like a large branch that blew down in a storm or during the growing season, if you saw lots of insect damage uh, or maybe fungus growing on a tree, those are all things that you could note in the comments section. And those will be helpful for researchers later on. So. Let's pretend that we only observed this one tree and we just enter that data for this one tree on uh, today when we were out there tree spotting. We're going to skip the other four trees on the beach route for our purposes. And at the bottom here, I'm going to click Submit Observations. And once I do that, my observations will be submitted and my data will be all set. So now you can see here that all of my data was entered. And if I want to enter additional data, I can go ahead and do that in these other two columns here. If I want to edit my data, I can go back and do that. So let's pretend that I emailed my, a tree spotter coordinator my question about the fruit phenophase, and they told me that, no, what you were seeing was not actually uh, fruit, and you want to uh, go back and edit that phenophase observation that you made. So I can go ahead and edit those by changing my selection. And then once I go down to the bottom and click Submit Observations, my edits will be entered and saved. So it's always a good idea if you learn about a phenophase uh, at a tree spotter's event or if you ask a question, it's always a great idea to go back and edit your data uh, to fix your past mistakes. That really helps us improve our data in the long term. It's very important. So that's how you enter uh, tree spotters data. I hope this video was helpful and stay tuned for more tutorial videos and thanks for watching.